Hey guys, welcome to The Roundtable. This is episode 110. I'm Jenny Walker, the social media ministry leader here at Life Church, and this is Mike Hill. He is our lead pastor, and sitting in between us is Sydney Fife. Yay! Yay! Thank you. <laughs> but the funny part was, is it's like Jenny's like, do you know Sydney? I'm oh like, yeah, I did. Oh, ask that. Yeah, from a oh, long time mm-hmm. ago. Yes, yeah. I, I can said, still picture you yelling from third base. <laughs> 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 was he intense? A, a little. You put him in, in, and Sherry together, and yeah, in it was, softball, not near as much as football. Football more yeah. intense. Oh, I mean, I probably. Well, I mean. There are people that still like, you know why I don't come to Life Church? It's because Mike serious? was on the sidelines the one time and oh he gosh. busted a whiteboard right in half. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, oh, I did. No. They were playing terrible. <laughs> and I busted that whiteboard right in half. So, oh my God. <laughs> no, football attends softball. I was there helping. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't near. <laughs> it's just as, so crazy, though. Huh? What a small world. No, right. Know. You know, it's been, it, yeah. been a while ago been the long way. Uh, oh gosh, 10 years? 10 years. Wow. Ago. At least. I was like 13 or 14, yeah. So was it weird <laughs> when you like started to have him as your pastor? I, I wasn't sure if he would recognize me or not. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. you didn't know like if he would recognize right now? Like remember that? Yeah, no, like he would just like walk past us in the row and I was like, I wonder if he still remembers. <laughs> 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 I was a little shrinky dink at the time. But, well, yeah. but you guys had come... Like you had come for a while and then didn't, come, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? You there came was for a little a, bit and then one, yeah. Yeah. There was a point in time where we were kind of uh, church hopping, I yeah, guess, after we out. left our first right. church. Yeah. Right. But then once you started coming all the, because Dane, I feel like, I don't know if I had Coach Dane, knew no. Dane, been, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Dane knows Maybe everybody. Maybe he was just around all the time. My my brother is the social butterfly between the two of us. Is he? So, oh, absolutely. Really? More yes. than you? Absolutely. If you put us in a social situation, he is the first one to start talking and making friends. Really? <laughs> For sure. Okay. Yes. Well, so tell us a little bit about you. What okay. What's going on? What do you love? Are you a movie watcher? Do you absolutely. binge watch things? Okay. Yes. Tell us about you. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah. So I grew up in Huntington, been here my whole life. Um, live with my mom and my dad still because student loans are killing me. Um, <laughs> Wait a second. I thought Biden was going to forgive all your student yeah. loans. <sighs> we are, are you still, not in that? Oh, no. I, I put in for it. Uh-huh. And be, based on the grants that I had received in the past, I was supposed to be getting up to $20,000 forgiveness. Until I got the email saying, oh, it didn't pass. And so it just kind of like crushed yeah, me didn't inside. Didn't you hear that? Like in Congress, they didn't pass it then. Yeah. Wait, why? I thought my aunt got it done. Well. Just certain people? I think your aunt's uh, was a whole different thing. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Like yeah, certain but, like public servants and things like that, like they can still get some sort of forgiveness. But okay. the big one that he was talking about, no, yeah. that, that kind of disappeared. Wow. So yeah, yeah. So all these people that had deferred. Because that's what was happening is just deferred, deferred, deferred. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would hear. And then everybody was waiting because mm-hmm. for sure it's going to be like a debt forgiveness for student loans. And- uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yep. So still at home, sadly. Uh, it's all good. <laughs> but, no, 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 no. They're fine. They're fine. Um, and then I have my younger brother who's like my best friend. He was like my built-in buddy. Um, really? Because growing up, like still we didn't. Still living at home too? Uh, yeah. He lives on campus at Manchester University during the school year. So right now he's still at home. So back to sharing the bathroom. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> like old times. Right, exactly. I'm wow. like, if you don't flush the sink out, I swear. Ew, <laughs> men are so nasty in the bathroom. Men are what? So nasty in Why? the bathroom. You, I don't know. You just aren't very good. Do you have a man in your he's bathroom? He's pretty good no, except for I when have. he shaves. That's huh? it. He's pretty good except for when he shaves. Like okay. then I have to like. Ew. Yeah. But anyways. Ew. Hair. Yeah. Okay. We, we didn't grow up with like neighborhood kids around to like play with so if we didn't get along we had no one to play with so he and I have gotten (laughs) very close and especially as we've grown up too like I tend to be the guinea pig because I'm the oldest so he'll see things that I go through and then I'm able to kind of help him along as well which is really cool so I think I did his FAFSA actually (laughs) something like that he'll he'll ask me financially questions or like hey how should I schedule this and so yeah so it's kind of cool where'd you go to school um, so I graduated from Huntington North in 17, right. went to Huntington University for my bachelor's and graduated in 2020, which was, <laughs> that was fun. Uh, Why? <laughs> we don't talk about 2020 anymore. 2020. Oh, no. Oh, I get so, it, I get so I was a broadcast major, but I was having to finish my degree at home. So I was taking <gasps> radio practicum and having to put a, like a blanket over my head with my computer oh my. to block out noise and stuff so I could record. So like, that's what you spots. went to college for too? Yes. Yeah. <gasps> 
There you wow. go. That's your main dream. Oh, His dream is, is to dream. be a uh, really? radio person. I want to be oh on the radio goodness. or I want to be, I want to do games. Like I oh, want to be, yeah. I don't want to be the play by play. I want to be the color, the color guy. commentator. Yeah. yeah I would be sure. the color guy. Yeah. So oh, is yeah. it hard to find a job in broadcast or is that what you're doing right now? Um, no, no, no. So I, I, I knew eventually around, are. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. It's so normal. when I graduated in 2020, I wanted to go more along the lines of like marketing and PR oh. with my media experience. So I. So kinda, you'll be like the, the, that one lady for the president. That kind of thing. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. What lady for the president? I was going to say that black lady, but I was oh, like, my oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to say that. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know how else you say it. What's her name? What's Why her name? Why has that gotten like, so offensive? What? Huh? Why has that gotten so offensive? What, black? Well, like... Like you just said, yeah. I should say that, but then I said it. Like, why? <laughs> why don't we have a whole White History Month? <laughs> I don't oh my god! I guess you'll have to ask them. You know what I mean? Well, okay, we're not going to get on. But that. that's the point: is whatever what she called. Like she's called something, right? Is that what you're talking something about? Something like From that. Like public so. Relate? Yeah. So like public relations, I, like I was big into like event planning and like social media marketing and things like that. So when I was at Huntington, I was a part of the news station and I was the producer. So I was also in charge of their social media and like posting clips of stories that were coming up. And so are you I, on Jenny's team? I didn't know no. that. She never told me that. I'm telling you now. You are <laughs> telling me now. Tell <laughs> the right stories. Yeah, no. Um, so I interned at Wayne 15 when I was in college. So I was writing scripts for them and they would like, they would check they them off. Do they read everything and... off the teleprompter? Yeah. Man, I could never do that. <laughs> oh, really? I would die trying to read something off a teleprompter. Oh, but man. But you wrote their stuff that they had to read? There were a few, yeah, that I wow. got on there. Did you ever put in, like, any jokes or something for them? <laughs> there was one bit that I tried to put in for weather, and they liked it, they approved it, and then they ended up not putting it in the show. Right. So I was like, I was kind of bummed. But, yeah, so kinda I was like, like Anchorman. not really my... Like Anchorman? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was like, that's not really my my thing. That's not what I want to do okay. for the whole time. So I moved around. I was doing marketing for a bank. I was working wow. for like Science Central, like nonprofits <gasps> and stuff. Fun. Eh, it no? was fun. <laughs> it was fun. so fun. <laughs> it was also during COVID and like, oh. especially when you're not able to be in the building all the time, getting the right training that you need, it makes a job super hard to learn. Yeah. And so it didn't take me long to figure out like, okay, this isn't what I want to do either. And I had been a substitute teacher during my undergrad um, so while I was working on my master's, I kept t uh, substitute teaching and I was like, you know what, maybe this is God's sign. Like, Hey, you should be a teacher. And I had wanted to become a professor at some point anyways, mm. in like media things wow. related to media. So I went and got my master's right after my undergrad. And so now I'm a high school English teacher <laughs> and I'm teaching English journalism and your book for this next school year. You're what? Um, Yearbook. Yeah. Oh, yearbook. 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 Yeah. Like, your book. Yeah, oh, it's, it's a class now. Yeah. Your book's a class again. <laughs> so book. that's cool. Yeah. So I do Where? that at Huntington North. Are you really? Yeah. Being back and going to school. My alma mater. I am uh, in my doctorate program right yeah. now, too. Oh, my so. gosh. What, do you just love school? What's I the matter do. with you? I really yeah, do. Does. I Judas. love to learn stuff. Yes. Huh? Yeah, you ain't going to love to learn it when you're paying for it for the rest of your life. <laughs> well, that's what my kids are going to be for. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just leave it to them. Fine. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, my I just think gosh. it's interesting. Or maybe you the next president will forgive it. I don't know. Yeah. They will. I'm going to say so, that. But I think no. it's interesting. You went through school. Like, you had all these different ideas and things you wanted, but you tried mm -hmm. out different things to see what would work and what didn't, you know? Like, yeah. I, I like heard somebody say one time, I think it was a guy from The Office or whatever. He, he had this really cool quote. <laughs> the movie? No, the TV the show? TV yeah, shows. the TV show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the guy office. who plays Dwight. I feel like I remember him doing like a video I saw on TikTok and he said something about how like your 20s are literally made for you screwing things up. Yes, they are. And <laughs> they so are. <laughs> like you're supposed to be in that process of like figuring yourself out and in your 20s. So yeah, I kind of went around everywhere and I was like, I'm not going to stay in a place that I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. So we'll just try all kinds of things and see. Your 20s are for figuring things out. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And messing things up. Huh? I suppose. No, I just Nobody else I'm, has told me different. Yeah. <laughs> just trying I to like think. it. Dwight has, he has sound advice. Uh, right? He I'm does. sure by the time I'm 30, I'll figure out what it was for, but right. I don't know right now. Hmm. I'm only 24. I don't know. <laughs> I, I know nothing. I know nothing. It just seems like it's taking a while for people to figure stuff out, but. Yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. Like 30s, then. Yeah. Mm -hmm, I don't yeah. know. It just seems like figuring it out. I think we have a lot what more What if you options. were married and your husband was 20 trying to figure it out? Would you be mad at him? <laughs> like right now? Yes. 
Uh, hey, I'm just going to change some jobs up. Try to. I'm not saying this about you. Right, yeah. I'm saying for, like, would that be okay if your husband was like, you know what? I don't like, I'm going to quit and try another one. Eh, I'm going to quit and try another as one. As long as there's a steady income, we should be okay. <laughs> but I wouldn't. I also wouldn't want him to, to be in a place that he felt like he was stuck and he mm-hmm. would bring that into the home. Okay. Yeah. That would be, that would be toxic. I feel like so yeah, I'd would. rather not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm like, wow, I have the opportunity and I'm not really tied down to anything. No, right. Let's for sure. try all kinds of stuff. No, I get that part so, of yeah. it. I just like, it seems like there's this guys that get married mm-hmm. and they're still trying to figure their life out. Oh yeah. You know, they're still trying to figure the out. The people that not- I saw getting married during college, I'm like, I don't know how you're doing this, yeah. but okay. <laughs> well, it's because we have so many more options now. We have the internet. We can, we can access things more easily than back then. I mm-hmm. feel like, I don't know. I was hearing this on a dating app or dating podcast. They were like, <laughs> because there are so many options, it's like choice fatigue that you don't want to like, this is why people are getting married later because you might like this guy, but then you're like, oh, well, I have so many more options. I don't know if he's the one. Well, mm-hmm. I think that, I mean, it's the only way to meet people when you're out of college or dating app. For yeah. the most part, yeah. For, yeah, now. Yeah. Really? I I'm, keep hearing, find a guy at church, but yeah, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, okay, Maybe Here's we'll find one after yeah. this podcast. Yeah. Here's right. your Two single ladies. Where's the music, yeah. Corinne? Come all on, the music. Just put, hey. Isn't there a song that goes like that? Oh, all the single ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Single ladies. Mm-hmm. All single mm-hmm. ladies. Mm-hmm. Oh, na, 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 na. And mm-hmm. your hands up. Hey, yes. okay, listen. And then there's the dance. Yeah. Guys, just side note, yeah. I signed myself up for this British get dating. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> what? I've been on it for the past like few days. So I'm looking for a husband in England. Or really? United Kingdom, whatever the heck that is. Are you really? Yes. Would you move over there? <laughs> I just feel like, I don't know. So I've been really into royals right now, like the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Watching this okay. TV show called The Royals, and it's actually really good. But anyways, um, I've just, I really like their accent. Okay. Well, so, I'm going to start sending people your way then. I didn't know that you were single. Yeah, oh, there goodness. you go. Um, I've been dating a guy for a little bit. Oh, like, it's sorry. still sorry, fairly guys, new. Sorry, she's been dating. <laughs> but we're really not sending anybody her way. <laughs> no, not at all. No, she's, no, no, no. you guys are exclusive. We're not trying to open up the door for anything. <laughs> so. Let's not make it messy. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're not exclusive, are you? Are you exclusive? Well, you're dating. So. Okay, yes. Yay. Yes, when yeah. you're dating. Yes, that do not doesn't... send her anybody. No, I know. We didn't mean any of that. No, There's only nothing. one single lady still. <laughs> it's All Jenny. single lady. <laughs> but forget <laughs> it. Unless you have a British accent. Yes. You're right. You're yeah. done. Just oh for gosh. fun, if you're listening or watching and you're a single guy out there, come up to Jenny on Sunday with a British accent <laughs> <laughs> and talk to her. That would be amazing. Just for fun, say, yeah. Yeah. yeah, come up with some pickup line. Would you like some tea? <laughs> is that, is that British? Take her to the cafe and get some <laughs> crumpets. Yeah, there you go. There yeah. we go. That's Absolutely. your pickup line. Yeah, but you got to put the English accent. Yeah. In it. Oh my gosh. Okay. So now teaching things are going well for the most part. Yes, I survived a whole year. So <laughs> <laughs> high schoolers too. High schoolers. <laughs> they're oh sophomores. Goodness. I have a yes. I have a love hate relationship with my students. Yeah. If you're hearing this, I love you. But <laughs> but yes, no, they're very different. And even though I haven't been out that long. It still seems very different. Mm. Yeah. Just uh, hearing like the way they talk, seeing their mannerisms. Mm. I'm like, uh, I that wouldn't. Have so there's flown. that much change since you've been there. So yeah. you feel really old. Kind of. Just out of it, maybe. No, yeah, she's the well, cool teacher. She's the young oh, lady. Oh, absolutely. In school. She's the cool teacher. She absolutely is. Yeah. But they still know not to curse in Miss Five's class. Yeah. So that's one <laughs> right. thing I don't do. But yeah, no, I, I do feel very old fashioned when I'm around them because I can remember when I, I, I think I was in eighth grade when they first gave us our own individual devices at school. Oh, wow. And that was like the game changer. Mm-hmm. Right. So now I see all these high schoolers and like they can't they can't put them away. Oh, and yeah. I'm not one of those teachers that will like take their phones from them. I'm like, you have to learn how to be responsible young adults right. with mm-hmm. your device. Your boss isn't going to take it away from you. So right. I'm not going to either. Right. But yeah, it's just very strange. And to see them like unable to keep eye contact or um, just, I don't know, just express themselves outwardly. Yeah. yeah. Like having conversations. Than, yeah. Is that yeah. hard for them? Or like trying to... Um, interpret like abstract things like um symbolism and things like that like they don't they don't engage with those kinds of concepts because it's not right here really yeah 
So I, I have to pull teeth trying to get conversations about, you know, romanticism oh or, my. you know, figurative language or whatever it is. And that's like half of my battle, right? Yeah. So that's what I teach. Well, so. let's be honest, though. If you were asking me about fig- figurative <laughs> language, is that what you just said? Uh-huh. Yes. I would be like, well. <laughs> that's a hyperbole, Mike. That's extreme I exaggeration. I would be looking down. Yes. yes. Yeah, I just. Yeah, I don't mean this bad. I hated my English teacher. <laughs> I that's not the first time I've heard that. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, I'm like, seriously, am I really gonna do any of these things? Like any of these things? Right. But I get it. Yeah. I mean, I, well, yeah. and I felt like it was the closest thing to what I had studied in the mm-hmm. past. No, things like I, speech yeah. and writing and things like that. So I'm like, well, I have like a different creative spin on what English is supposed to look like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and I thought that was so cool. maybe you make it enter. Maybe I wouldn't hate you. <laughs> I maybe, play as many games as possible yeah, I don't think because you would. I think it's Yeah, that's fun. what I mean. So maybe yeah. it was like If I'm not enjoying the lesson, then I know they're not. Yeah, so for small groups, she'll bring in like little games and stuff. Yeah. Like I'll use she stuff from my some. classroom in yeah, small she groups. Does yes. brings the stuff that she does for her okay. classroom. Yeah. So you wouldn't it would be interesting. Oh yes. Fun. First night, get to know you bingo is great. <laughs> <laughs> get to know you bingo. Yes. Get to know you bingo. Wow. Yeah. So each square had like a, a personality trait or something you had to go around the room and find somebody who had two siblings or had been to the Rocky Mountains or whatever What is the was. most interesting thing you learned about Jenny since you've known her? Oh my goodness. Um, her, <laughs> her love for her dogs is undying. Oh, um, that's true. Yes. And she now knows it said, when time I the said, pharmacy closes. I, <laughs> yes, I said I interesting things, not dumb things. Her dogs are dumb things. Well, well they're not. Nobody's interested in that. Yes, they are. A lot of people are actually. Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Jenny's a unique personality. I know. Yes. yes. That's what everybody loves about her. Yeah. Sure. But we're not on here for me. Huh? Anyways, back to Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Come on, gosh. Jenny. You don't like the spotlight or what? No, but we just have minimal time. We got lots of questions. Okay. Well, okay. tell us something that, like, do you like to read? Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your favorite book? Okay. Um, or I don't, book series. I don't really have like a favorite book. My the tattooist of Auschwitz was really good. What? I, I like history stuff too. So yeah, so it was about like a, a Jewish man who got into Auschwitz and he was assigned the tattooist where you would put the numbers on mm-hmm. their arms, and so that was like his job. He gave them their new identity. So it was actually really neat. Um, I like crime novels. So anything by John Grisham, any murder mysteries, mm. I'm going for. Um, and then you've got Nicholas Sparks on the other end. So it's yeah. between the two. Uh, <laughs> murder and love. Do you like Harry which Potter? Goes to I've never two. read them. They're too oh, long. Oh, devastation. It's sad. <laughs> They're too long. <laughs> well, you haven't watched Harry Potter ever or li- read them? No. I was saying that if it's too long, that's. No, Harry Potter's not, too, too long. long. Mm-hmm. No, they're great. You should read them. Yeah, come on. And then you can go to Universal and go to Harry Potter World. Really? No, I'm just saying. Uh, well, I'm big into Supernatural, like the TV series. Yeah. So I feel yes, like that's kind of close. Oh, listen. Yeah. She oh, met. Tell the story. Okay, so I Chris I got into it this. like a couple years ago. I've seen all 15 seasons, over 300 some episodes. Die right? hard fan. Cold Die what? hard. Supernatural. So it came out in like 2005 and it just canceled in 2020. So Kinda 15 like seasons. Yes. It deals with all kinds of things. Supernatural monsters, heaven, hell, everything. This is on Netflix. So, yes. It still is on Netflix. Yes, it used it to be on like, it was on the CW network yeah. when it was premiering, but it's on, it's on Netflix now. And I am like a huge fan. So in June, I convinced my mother to take me to Chicago for the supernatural convention. <laughs> and no, I got, yes, 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 I, just did. Wait, just I wait. got my picture taken with Jensen Ackles, who plays Dean Winchester, my favorite character. <laughs> I paid for that. She paid to be I sitting, sitting there that. next to him. Yes. Really? Yes. And you got photographed. I did. She wow. touched him, right? D- yes, it was a hug, and yeah. it was the greatest two seconds of my life. She ki- he kissed you? <laughs> no, he hugged me. No, oh, hug. I think she said kiss. No, 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 no. she hugged you him. You paid an extra $5 for a kiss. <laughs> oh, my gosh, no, no. Yeah, so we No, like, you wouldn't have paid for him to kiss you? Oh, it wouldn't have been $5. <laughs> <laughs> that man doesn't breathe for five dollars. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, no. So we got to like meet some of the characters, watch some panels. Um, some what? Like the panels where they like have Q and A's and things oh, with yeah. the, the cast yeah. members. So did you ask him a question? No, I didn't get to. If the, you could have, would you, what would you ask him? Oh, goodness. Um, so Ooh. I wanted to ask him something along the lines of like, 
being inspirational for my students to take in. So trying to get kids to do things that they don't like to do is like pulling teeth. So I wanted to ask them, okay, has there ever been like a job throughout your entertainment career where you weren't super into it, but how did you get through that? Hmm. Ah. So something, yeah, something that I could use later and be like, see, this guy See, said it. This yeah. guy, this, the right? supernatural guy. <laughs> right? Because right? yes. all the kids have watched Supernatural. Oh my goodness, Jensen Ackles, yes. That's who you like too? Yeah. Would really? you pay to sit by him and get your picture? Probably. Would you pay to be kissed by him? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, wow, it's just a kiss on the cheek. It's just I mean, a celebrity, really right? Matter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I thought he was a wax figure when I walked up to him at first. Because he was that perfect. Yeah. What? <laughs> my mom, my mom walked this in. The- <laughs> can't be. All right, oh, I'm going to have to look it up. My now. mom walked in the room with me as I was waiting in line to get my picture. She looked behind the curtain. She looks at me and goes, wow. <laughs> Seriously? Oh, yeah. What is the guy like muscular I forget what he looks and like. chiseled? He, and- uh, everything. Okay. I mean, and when you love the show that much, it's like you just, you just love him even more. You feel like a part of them. Mm-hmm. You feel like a you part do. of them. Huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to picture. So this guy's like. I don't know what he looks like. Oh, I forget. I'll show you. Did you, you saw my Facebook post, right? <laughs> yes, but yes, I forget okay. what he looks like. Yeah. Somebody you would marry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. was built in a lab, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Okay. okay. So tell us a little bit about you. Growing up. Did you grow up in the church? Like, tell us your whole faith journey, because I don't okay. really know that at all. Yeah, I don't really know either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so um, I got into the church when I was a kid. Um, my parents, like, they weren't ever super into it, mm-hmm. but they knew that it was important to expose you to it. So they took us, and I got baptized when I was nine. And I don't really remember how everything came about, but mm-hmm. my mom told me I was very adamant. Okay. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay. So you know, having that childlike faith, Mm -hmm. I was big into it. And I also knew that the good kids went to church and I, my entire goal in life was to be a good kid. Seriously? So yes. You didn't want to be a rebel? Not at all. I have the worst guilty conscience in the entire world. (laughs) It's so bad. I can't do, I can't even think of doing anything bad without it like twisting my insides. Really? Yes. It's so bad. You can't tell me a secret because it will not stay with me. (laughs) (laughs) You can't do it. I will get Christmas presents out in November. I can't handle it. Wow. So anyways, yeah. So um, we stayed there and it was a church that was kind of dying out. Mm. Like the the older generation was definitely in charge of things Mm. and we wanted to go where our friends were going to go. So that was when we kind of started church hopping Mm -hmm. and, you know, went to different places around town. We'd stay here for a little while and not feeling it kind of move on. Um, And I was never big into like campus life or anything at school like that. Um, So it, it was a part of my life, but sort of took like the back burner Mm -hmm. and, um, We tried life for a while and then we just couldn't like commit to anything at the time, I guess, is what happened. So, um, so I was, I I was in high school and I started dealing with really bad anxiety and you know, it kind of. In high school? Yes. It, it it kind of, it shifted everything. So was there something that caused it? No, I think it was a lot to do with like, I'm, I'm a very harsh critic of myself and I am perfectionist type A personality. So everything had to go a certain way. Hmm. And so, and I could do big things. Like I could go to a dance recital and I could perform and I would be fine. But you ask me to drive out of town to go to dinner somewhere. And it was a little weird or just getting up to go to school in the morning. It was very like wow. strange. I don't That's know why, interesting. but I, I'm still that way today to, to an extent, not nearly as bad, but it changed the, the plans that I had for college. Mm-hmm. I was going to go away to college and live on campus. And the last minute I had like a meltdown and I was like, I can't do this right now. Wow. So I think that was part of God going, okay, I've removed everything else. Now, who am I to you mm-hmm. now? So wow. as a kid, I was the way that you got to be a good kid, but who am I to you as an adult? So I went to a Christian college and kind of got, you know, exposed to that question more. And that, like that was more of a focus. And so after I graduated college, college. Well, for the first time uh, <laughs> I was like, okay, like, you know, I don't want to be forced into doing this. I'm not having to go to chapel anymore, mm-hmm. but this is going to be my own choice. And mm-hmm. so I've been on that journey from like, I don't know, 21 to now mm-hmm. of trying to figure out who he is to me. And I feel like I've come up with more questions than I have answers, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yes, cause I'm a very, like, I'm a very 
overthinking analytical person. Okay. And yeah. so there are certain concepts that I just they don't they don't register for some mm. reason. I can I can tell you what they mean. Okay. Like like a good student, okay. I can <laughs> regurgitate it. But to really like have it all sink in is a bit hard things that are that are really abstract things like grace things mm-hmm. like you know a relationship with an unknown father you know those kinds of things so those are the stuff that I have been butting heads with God mm. so but yeah so I feel like but I'm on that journey to wanting to learn and like okay. I've been a good student academically and I, I want to be a good student here as well <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm at well I gotta I mean this is interesting to me so talk <laughs> me through the whole like what are, because you can't be the only person that like, I've never thought of this. Like mm-hmm. I've never thought of the abstract things being difficult to be able to put mm-hmm. together. Yeah. So and like I said, I can tell you what they mean, no, but right. for, for them sure. to fully register like in your head and in your heart, yeah, that's right. like a different process. Right. And I've always been very like, this is fact, mm-hmm. this is not. And yeah, so let's more just robotic talk. in a yeah, sense. So let's like, just talk about it. Yeah. I mean, for so for people that are, wrestling with this whole idea of how do you have a relationship with an unknown father? Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. it's easy to talk to somebody and know whether right. you have a relationship or not. So yeah. as you're wrestling through it, how do you do it? Like what's your journey? What are the things that you're processing? What's helping you? What's mm-hmm. hindering you? Because again, for the people that are listening or watching, mm-hmm. I can't mm-hmm. imagine there's not a lot of people that have been like, right. I get it. I'm supposed to have a relationship. And that's what everybody's saying. Have a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. But- yeah. And I've always had a lot of <clears throat> questions, but I always felt like I wasn't in either a position or an environment that was welcoming to those questions. So I remember I was in a lecture in college one time and it was a world history type of course. And we were talking about different civilizations. And I was also in a philosophy class where we were talking about moral absolutes. And so I asked my history teacher, I said, okay, all of these other um, nations, all these civilizations came before Christianity. How can we know that this is the moral absolute? Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a genuine question. And she looks at me and goes, well, in here we believe. And immediately I was like, oh, wow. Never mind. (laughs) I was like, okay, I know we're at a Christian school and everything, but I feel like God welcomes questions. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I feel, I feel dumb. I'm not asking any more questions. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, it made you feel like an outcast in a sense. Yes. And I was also a commuter on a residential campus or okay. predominantly residential. So mm-hmm. I felt like an outcast anyways. Yeah, for sure. But then when that happened, I kind of embraced the outcast. And I was like, all right, God, if this is who's following you, I, I don't want a part of that. So right. I'm going to figure out who you are for myself. Right. And I'm not asking any more questions. I'm going to do it on my own. And I right. think that's been a hindrance to me yeah. is like, if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. I've heard that my entire <laughs> life, you know, like my grandpa's a hard worker. I hear it from him. My dad's right. a hard worker. I hear it from him. So that's kind of been my mindset the whole time, rather than inviting people in and getting advice or asking questions, because like you said, a lot of people probably have the same ones. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they just don't, want, again, I think they're afraid to ask yeah. because Again, different. So I'm the I'm the type of person that would say when it comes to certain aspects of life, it's mm-hmm. how you do it and you do it on your own and you work hard. And if you want it done a certain mm-hmm. way, you do it. Christianity is the only thing that's not made to be done mm-hmm. done alone. Right. Yeah. Like Christianity is the only thing that would be has to be done relationally on a journey. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, and I think that's the process. And I don't I don't think people feel comfortable sitting in a round and room and saying, like, hey, here's the deal. So if you're saying that the Bible is the moral absolute, mm-hmm. you know, how do we know? Like, right. and without people trying to get all worked up about it, mm-hmm. well, let's just talk about it. How do we know? And what is it? And what resources can you read? And what are the things that you can go mm-hmm. through? And let's come back together and talk about it. I think people struggle with mm-hmm. Yeah. That. And it's also, like you said, it's a journey. So you've got your highs and you've got your lows yeah. and the low doesn't discount you as a follower either. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I've also been like, cause like I said, perfectionist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So those lows hit me very low mm-hmm. when I hit them. So trying to pull myself up out of those is also very challenging. So I'm glad that God gave me a boost of courage to go to grow night or go to small group mm-hmm. or to see other people who have hit these lows as well and a bounce back. Mm-hmm. Right. So it gives me kind of the, the boost I need to get back up. Well, and I think so. the reality is, is that, May, and maybe this hasn't been created, but I think the way to allow people to grow in their faith, it, faith is allow for questions. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, I don't think that 
it makes any sense to do a small group or to do anything without the ability to say, right. Have you ever thought about this? Like yeah. have you really ever thought about exactly. this? Have you ever processed what this means and how it works together and how can we, how can we go down this road? Because it's not, it's not offensive to God. Right. I mean, I think that's what everybody gets mm -hmm. mad about. Well, you can't ask that yeah. question because you can't doubt or you can't right. ask him. I'm like, You're or not sometimes, a true sometimes he'll answer the question, but it's a, I am God and you are not. Yeah. You only have a limited amount of knowledge. Yeah. And that's another thing that drives me bonkers. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> like, I like I love learning and yeah, I'm like, too. okay, maybe there is no answer for me right now. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it'll come later. And mm -hmm. patience is another virtue that yeah. I, we're working on. But, but if it was a if it if God was able to be understood through a textbook, you wouldn't be God. Right. Right. Like I mean exactly. it's, but the but the idea of talking and questioning is to get to know him more. Yeah. Just like we would in any environment. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, I can't complete this is this is the thing for all of us, right? So yeah. everybody has a viewpoint because they come from a different lens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And so too many times when we're in conversations with people, we view what they say through a very limited lens. Mm -hmm. Right. So they'll say something, you'll be like, Oh my gosh, this, but no, actually, if you knew the way they grew up, if you mm -hmm. knew what their background was, if you knew right. what they struggled with, if you knew where those questions came from. So part of the journey mm -hmm. right. is to truly understand each other. You've got to understand each other before you can even understand a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Like that's true. where a person is. So yeah. that's why I say, here's the thing about small groups. And I, I mean, I've said this for years. It's not that we need more information. Right. Honestly, there's, so many people know way more than they'll ever do, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and, and understand way more than they'll ever be able to apply. Small groups are opportunities to get to know people mm -hmm. and understand their lens and their journey so that the applicable parts of scripture fit into a real life model, right? Yeah. Because to understand an abstract God that's a way and you can't see him and it's hard. To, the only way we understand it is through the lives of people, mm -hmm. you know, that's true. Mm -hmm. Jesus yeah. become flesh. We become representatives of. So if you want to understand the character of God, if you want to understand some of the things that are just weird, like yeah. you can't get, you just yeah. can't, Yeah, we should be able to look at people and we, we should be exhibiting character traits mm -hmm. of an invisible God. Yeah. Right. But you only get that in a journey. You don't get that from listening to somebody on a Sunday morning. Right, you don't right. get it from a lecture. You don't get it from even reading a book because mm -hmm. I'm the same way. I love to debate. I love to learn. I love to go down all of those roads. Yeah. But I think it's important go down those roads from the perspective of why are we going down these roads and what do we what do we want to learn? And yeah. so anyway, I think that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm glad you're but it's cool that you're still on that yeah. and willing mm -hmm. to admit like yeah. I'm still walking the journey of understanding. Oh yeah. And, I am the first person to admit that I am perfectly imperfect. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> but that is so helpful, just like the questions, because I think you perceive somebody as something. And then when they are also like questioning the same thing that you are, you may have put them in a spot of like, Oh, they never doubt. They never have their faith. But mm -hmm. then I feel like it connects you more to God in that way too, because it's just like, I feel like when we don't allow ourselves to open up and ask questions, it almost not necessarily diminishes God, but it might hinder somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can't describe what I mean. Yes. I had it in my head. Well, well, no, I'm just, yeah. anybody that's truly seeking a relationship mm -hmm. and truly wants to do the will of their father mm -hmm. are going to have to this day. I still have questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I still struggle with not understanding certain aspects of how things have turned out. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. there are still things that I'm like, hmm. this is what you say. <laughs> This is what happened. I still love you. I will always love you. I don't know about this. Yeah. Right. You know, like Definitely. I just I just don't know. Like I don't know that that's, you know, that back to we can't always understand mm -hmm. and maybe that will be revealed to me someday, but I'm still not going to just be like, "Oh yeah, it's all okay." No, actually, I love you, but this doesn't seem Yeah, right. exactly. Like this just doesn't seem okay. But mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I'm, it's not going to keep me from loving you. It's not going to keep me from being in a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. It's not going to keep me from pursuing you. Right. You know. So right. I think that's great. I think Tony, you've opened up what I think should mm -hmm. be for a lot of people. A very if you're on a journey to get mm -hmm. to know somebody, 
Here's an example. Mm-hmm. So you ever go on a date where it's all about the other person and all they talk about is themselves? Uh, yes. No, actually. No. Oh, I have. No. I yeah. usually have to, I, the worst ones are when you have to pry information from Ooh, them. Oh, yeah. Because they is. just <laughs> won't talk. <laughs> yeah. So oh, my goodness. If you, like, I can tell when I'm, if I meet with somebody, mm-hmm. so not even on a date, but if I'm, because I've only dated two people. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dated my wife and married her, dated Sarah. So I guess I don't have any. How about just meeting people? Yeah. Right? So you meet somebody yes. and you know inside of this meeting, it's all about them. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like the only thing that they want to do is talk about them and all their accomplishments. Yeah. I just sit there Shut because off. at the end of the day, this is not, they don't want to get to know me. They right. want to tell me about themselves. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what you're bringing up is we should be the same way with, with Jesus, right? Like we mm-hmm. should be in a, he can, we're reading, he's telling us about him, Yeah. you know, and we're back and forth. We're, we're talking back and forth in a mm-hmm. way because that's the way real relationships work mm-hmm. yeah. and asking the questions to get to know that person on a deeper level. Mm-hmm. Because the other thing that I think we forget when you read scripture, that's the, Hey, we can study it. Mm-hmm. But there is this part that when you ask you will get something that you can't get out of scripture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's the feeling. It's the, like, yeah. haven't you had that before? Like that feeling, like, I know, I feel like God's mm-hmm. drawing me or I feel like the Holy Spirit's telling yeah. me. Like, that's something you can't read. Right? That's the one thing that I feel like I've been able to hang on to throughout the mm-hmm. journey, the highs and the lows, is that, you know, you look at the outside world and then you get this one moment of peace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, that's that's what I'm clinging to. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. The unexplainable. Like right. we don't know where right. that comes mm-hmm. from, but mm-hmm. that for sure comes from God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, questions. We're already Question at time. Oh goodness. <laughs> I told you I was gonna talk too much. <laughs> and also Oh no, not at all. Oh yeah, you haven't. It's but good also stuff. we've had a couple people text while we were have been sitting here oh, too. Seriously. Yeah. So I don't wow. know where our number's Ooh, at okay. right now. But all right, first question. Here we go. This is from Emily Krieger. She wants to know. Oh, wait, that was me. Hold on. How? (laughs) Okay, well, I don't know why, but this texting group is so confusing. Oh, my goodness. All right, here we are. Dang it. Hold on. I went to my top. See, I'm telling you. All right. Here we go. Another thing I learned about Jenny. (laughs) (laughs) Squirrel. How do you balance teaching in this day and age with all the rules and regulations that prevent you from going the extra mile to be excellent. Oh, wow. oh goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, on the surface, it's, it's definitely constricting. Um, but I also try to remember that I'm not there to play a role. Like I'm still me. Mm-hmm. And so being able to put my personality into what I do, like there's a, there's a freeness to it as well, even though there are some things that are, or restricting like, you know, regulations and building code, like all like, those yeah. kinds of things. But yeah. yeah, if I'm enjoying my job, then, then I'm good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So from a personality standpoint, <laughs> yeah. you can still be who you are. Exactly. Regardless of what the restrictions. Right. There are those little, you know, the little voices in the back of your head that, you know, Hey, remember this or remember to implement this. Mm. And so, but I mean, no amount of rules is going to help the learning process, I guess. Like there's only so much that rules can do. Mm -hmm. It's the relationship between the student and the teacher. Yes. So absolutely. Good. All right. Lisa Lice. Okay. I love her. (laughs) I know. (laughs) What keeps her grounded in this current culture and how does she stand apart? So I'm assuming that she means in like the workplace, maybe. Do you think that's what it is? No, I just or say just in, general. Society in general. Okay. In general. In general. Oh goodness. Um, so I've always been told that I have like an old soul and I tend to gravitate towards things that are maybe not for my age group necessarily. I love 80s hair band music. <laughs> I will like, like um I saw Def Leopard. I've yes. seen Journey. Wow. Like I've seen Journey in concert. Like Def yes, Leopard. sticks. Um yeah, so all wow. the all the good stuff. My parents, they raised me up on the good music <laughs> for sure. For so sure. you feel like you don't even have I mean you're not falling into the draw of the new not really. You know. I like technology. I like learning new things uh, and being able to use them for certain functions, but I, I, I see the dangers as well of other people my age that are getting into it and mm-hmm. they become consumed by whatever society is doing Do at the time. With that? Is your friend, is your phone, your best friend, like Jenny? <laughs> I, I use it probably more <laughs> than kidding, I should. I know, you are. I know you are. I use it probably more than I should, but I, 
I mean, I get enough sleep and everything. Yeah, no, so yeah. like, it's, it's a tool. I, I keep trying to tell myself it's just a tool, right. you know? Um, so and I've never really, I don't know, related to people in my own age group. Okay. I've always, even when I was a kid and we were at family Christmas, I wanted to go sit with the adults because yeah. their conversation was more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just kind of how I've always been. So I, you know, I gravitate, especially at my job, I gravitate towards the older teachers that yeah. have the wisdom to give mm-hmm. and have, you know, the, the sympathy yeah. when I need it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll share stories with them and stuff. And so, yeah. Well, that's great wisdom yes. too. Yeah. I mean, yes. the wisdom of being able to go to older people and understand and mm-hmm. learn from. Mm-hmm. And I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Emily Miller. Yay. She <laughs> says, okay, I have a comment and a question. Comment. Sydney, I'm so thankful to have such an amazing and beautiful friend like you. You are so driven and such an amazing role model. God has some amazing things in store for you. Soon to be Dr. Fife. Oh my God. Love you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Her question is for everyone. Yes. If you were on a deserted island, this is weird, and could only bring two things, what are you bringing and why? I'll go first. Roman and Grayson, because they're awesome. I love them. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Uh, We're saying two things could be a person? Sure. Yeah, anything. Okay. This is Uh, funny, though. Do you want me to go? Sure. You go. Uh, A Rambo knife. Yes. (laughs) What's a Rambo knife? Have you seen Rambo? You've never seen Rambo? Is it one of his knives, though? Like... Is it special? It's a survival knife. Like, you take the end the of it off and it's got all kinds of stuff yeah. in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, cool. the Rambo series is so good. Yeah, so you got to go out and kill things. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, and I want to take my wife, for crying out loud. I want to <laughs> be out there lonely. For I need to take Sarah out there. I don't oh want to be gosh. on a desert island all alone with just me and a knife. Yeah, there yeah. you right. go. So, um, I would take my younger brother because I know it would be a fun time. And <laughs> and a radio because music uh, is yeah. necessity. Oh, there you go. So, Hmm. all right. Next one is Adam Shoemaker. Okay. What is Jesus teaching you in this phase of life? That's a good one. Uh, Jesus is teaching me that I, I know enough to know that I know nothing. Hmm. (laughs) We'll go with that. That's a great one. That I can learn as much as I want, but I also am not at the end of the rope yet at the end of the journey where I can look back and see how all that stuff applied. Hmm. So just kind of. Just take it all in and let him have the driver's seat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. Which I'm still clenching the wheel. Yeah. But, <laughs> but <laughs> we're working on it. Yeah, good. <laughs> Bree Sullivan, your makeup is on point, and she's referring to the picture oh that you gosh. sent me. What is your go to shadow palette or favorite skincare products? Yes, I love this oh question. Oh my gosh. Bree. Okay. Your so, favorite palettes. Yeah, so like my eyeshadow, eyeshadow palettes. palettes. Like you open it up. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. during COVID, when I got TikTok, makeup TikTok was my oh, go to. And yes. I still to this day will watch a million videos. So tutorials and yes. stuff. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes. I love watching. It's it's very like <laughs> relaxing. Yeah. I don't know. They talk sometimes during it. Yeah, I like exactly. That. Like tell stories and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, it'd be like landscaping shadow. for a guy or something. It I don't would, know. Yeah. Like watching something being built. Yeah. That's kind of what happens. Mm. So, um, so yeah, so <laughs> I tend to go for the Morphe shadow palettes, Ooh. um, because they're, they're large. You get a lot of, a lot of product, um, skincare. I use, um, the CeraVe resurfacing serum. Ooh, I have that. Um, yeah. It, it's, a, it's a tad bit pricey, but yeah, it is. It, it's really good. And I have begun to love facials. So if you go get a facial, really, you just feel really good. Maybe yeah. that's what I need. Yes. I've never done that before. <laughs> Can they, for yes. this part of me. <laughs> I much the, of my face left. Oh my gosh. I and got the I, dermaplaning one the last time. Ooh. And it actually was pretty good. Have you ever seen that? Yes. Where people take like a, a medical scalpel and they will like scrape your face and it, yeah. This is a it's, you pay for this. It's dermabrasion, yes, right? Isn't Listen. it dermabrasion? My you, dermabrasion's you know, different. Yeah. You want to know different. what amazes oh. me yeah, in no, the world? Yeah, dermaplaning. Do you know what amazes me in the world? What's that? People that will pay for an animal to crawl on your back and call it yoga. <laughs> oh, go And yoga. somebody go that yoga. will pay for a scalpel to be scraped in the face. <laughs> like, right? I, like, how does that happen? Or so, a bunch of needles in your face, like acupuncture. Oh, gosh. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Um, okay. But basically, like, Derma so it takes scalping. off. Derma scalping. Yeah, it takes off, like, the, the dead skin. Yeah. It takes yeah. off the peach fuzz and, like, you have acne scarring what? or whatever. The peach fuzz. <laughs> peach fuzz, yeah. Huh. Yeah, all the stuff that's on your chin. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. But yeah, it's very relaxing. And nah, she'll play like I music in the background. I learn something yes. new every podcast. Nice. Yes. Nah. The the globes too. I love those. The ice globes. Oh. Put them in the fridge and just rubs them on your face and it depuffs everything. How nice. Yes. Where do you go? Is it the Indiana skincare? No. Um, so Haley Hauser works at uh Lux on Stadium Drive. Uh-huh. It, it looks like a house, but it's like oh. a hair and, and face. She does Is it? Haley yes. gonna be listening to this? I sure hope so. Haley, we haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing? Let <laughs> oh, me you know. know Haley? I do. Okay. Yes, she's had her baby on the girl. Oh. Too. Yeah. Yeah, she played so- okay. softball with me and Lexi. Yeah. Wow. She's had her baby girl a couple months ago. Aww. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, Angie Sendo. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? That's what she, That's what she put? said. I got nothing. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, <laughs> she's something. All well, right. Hi, Angie. <laughs> Sarah Jeffers, what is biblical womanhood to you? Oh. Biblical Whoa. womanhood. Ooh. Wow, it, I don't, just don't even know if I could answer that. Okay. Oh, we'll try this. All right. So I think that in today's day and age, I think that it is being a feminist in the right context. And what I mean by that is you can be strong Mm -hmm. without being the loudest Mm. or by making the most money or making a man feel inferior. You can still be a powerful female presence in a gentle way. Yes. Wow. That was a great answer. That was the most political answer I've ever heard. (laughs) I, I would job. like to eventually run for some kind of office. <laughs> you could. I would. You that, could. That was perfect. That was. That exactly. was perfect. The way that the wording, you could Everything. tell you're an English teacher. Oh, thanks. A modern day <laughs> feminist. Let me tell you. But in a good way. Yeah, huh? you don't have to be an extremist I, to yeah. be. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. Perfect. All right, Gina Van Meter. My heart becomes so full when I see younger people serving Jesus. Question that she has is who is Jesus to you? Um, oh goodness. So Jesus and I are in a talking phase. <laughs> and what I'm, so oh, that's so it, for those of you who don't know, in modern day dating, it's no longer a courtship. You are talking. Right. So oh, Jesus and I have been talking for a very long okay. time and we're getting to know each other better. I wouldn't say that the relationship is where I would like it to be at this point, but I do know certain things about him. I know that I get that peaceful feeling when I'm anxious and it didn't come from anywhere else. I know it had to be him. Mm -hmm. Um, It's when I see, you know, smiling faces here serving early on Sundays. Like there's just a certain... Essence, yeah. yes, yeah. something, certain something. So he is my certain something. Aww. There you go. I'll go with that. Aww. Okay. Awesome. Makes me different. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Good. Tabby Hall, teaching has so many challenges, more today than ever before. How do you keep from burnout? I believe teaching is one of the greatest callings. In what ways has God shown you that you have been called to this path? So the first question: How do you keep from burnout? Okay. So burnout. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I think I probably hit it already. Yeah. Um, but our uh, professional development coordinator was giving us uh, first year teacher trainings throughout the year. And she showed us the roller coaster that a typical first year teacher will go through. And you'll usually hit the the downward fall around like Christmas break or so. So I kind of anticipated it coming in. Mm-hmm. Um But again, like I said, if I'm not enjoying what I'm teaching or how I'm teaching it, I know the kids aren't. So there are certain days where, yeah, I will bring in a bingo game. That's what we did for my birthday. I got to celebrate my birthday in school. I brought my own Rice Krispie treats. It was lovely. So just having fun with it. School's not supposed to be a drag. It really isn't. And for somebody who loves education, like... It should be fun. I've been doing it long enough. You'd think I'd exactly. <laughs> enjoy it. Um, so yeah. So like having fun with my job, my coworkers are awesome. Anytime I've ever had a question, they're always mm-hmm. like just willing to talk and stuff. Um, and then doing out things outside of school that I really like. So I, I've learned this about myself. I need at least two hours of silence when I come home from school mm. because I am tired of talking. 
Wow. So don't talk to me. <laughs> Two like, hours I just of wanna, silence. Well, she's I been just talking wanna, all day. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm, I'm tired of talking. And if I do keep talking, it's kind of like autopilot. It just keeps yep. going. Okay. So I, I need my silent time. Um, I also teach dance too. So I clogging. Yes. Yes, I teach clogging, so it's like tap dancing, but yeah. it's much yeah. louder. Oh, it's yeah. so much fun. River dancing. River dancing. The shoes aren't Are you going to do a little bit of it? I could. Yeah. Okay, do I don't have my taps. You don't need to. Yeah, we don't need just to. Just give us a couple moves. Just a couple. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Come on. <laughs> Maybe later. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, and I have those kids, too, which is kind of nice because they're younger and they bring a lot of energy. So if I'm tired after yeah. teaching all day at school, I come in and they're, they're ready to dance. So I put on some fun music and we just go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's fun too. It, it, I think it, it adds to the burnout in a sense because I'm constantly around children, but also it, it's Doing a good, something you enjoy. Yeah, I do. I do enjoy it. So yeah. yeah. Good. And then the second part of that question was what, in what ways has God shown you that you have been called to this path? So, um, I, before I started teaching, I was at a desk job and I felt so constricted and no one talked and I couldn't ask questions and I was just stuck in this little bubble and I hated it. So the amount of freedom that I felt when I got my own room and I could decorate it how I wanted. And, you know, if I go ask a teacher a question, they'll give me their wisdom, but they'll also say, you're still the one in charge. Mm. So you kind of, you have that that freedom. Um, you still have people you can go to, you ask questions, you still have superiors that you have to answer to, but also you have your own space to do mm. things with. So that freedom was really awesome. And it just kind of like lifted some weight off my shoulder. So I'm like, thank you, God. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just, there are certain days where <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, but I surprise myself <laughs> sometimes. Like I'll come in and I don't think a lesson's gonna go very well, but I just I get a kick in the pants and it goes really great. Yeah. And I talk like crazy. And before I know it, the kids are enjoying themselves. They're coming up to me and just wanting to have personal conversations oh, wow. about, you know, extracurriculars or whatever. Like they've built that bond with me because they see that I am enjoying what I'm doing. So I'm like, that's, that's what I was searching for yeah. to feel needed to have a purpose. And here I am. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sandy act. Hold on. Sandy Atkinson. I think that's how you pronounce it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Sandy. Oh, you know? Okay. I think that's how you say it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> the world needs more amazing teachers. And she sent a heart emoji. If you were starting college in August of 2023, would you still pursue an education degree? <laughs> no. Well, you are still in college. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. And here's why. So I think that people who go through the education program, they're very prepared to be in a classroom. But when it comes to delivering their content, they only know what a textbook taught them. Mm. And so when I came in this year, I was one of several new teachers who came in with outside experience. Mm -hmm. So for example, we had an accounting teacher come in and she had been in an office for 26 years. So we all came in with our own views and our own ways of thinking and our own personal experiences that we could share that I don't think I would have been able to if I had just gone to education school. Mm -hmm. So I like the fact that I have that outside background. I have my education background. So when I work with, um, like online sites or, you know, doing online lessons with the kids. Like I'm comfortable in that realm. I can make things fun. I make yeah. our agenda online and I put fun memes and things like that on them. <laughs> so, or, you know, creating online games that they can play to review things. So I'm very comfortable in those elements and, you know, public speaking, writing, all of those things that I learned in school, I still do. Right. So I'm glad that I have that other background to mm -hmm. fall back on. So. Yeah. All right. Then she also wants to know what has been your biggest positive piece of advice or wait, no, hold on. What has been your biggest positive that you have experienced as a teacher? Positive. Um, I get fun notes and stuff a lot from like the kids at the end of the school year and especially the ones that you didn't think knew mm. you were there or Ooh, cared yeah. to know you were there they will give you a little something and it's like, oh, I'm glad that you were 
attentive, first of all, but also yeah. that I was able to make a difference for you. So yeah, because that's the whole purpose in it. Exactly. Or I, I call them my uh, my adopted students. It's the kids that I don't have in class, but have gotten to know me through their friends or will see me in the hallways and they will come in and stop by during passing periods just to say hi wow. or to grab a in off my desk or <laughs> just to hang for a little bit. Like those are those are some of my favorite moments is like, I don't even know who his name, but it comes in <laughs> yeah. every day. So to create that kind of environment, environment that the kids feel welcome and feel mm-hmm. safe in my room. Like that's really awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Last one from Karen Bennett. Okay. Have you ever danced in worship to God? Um, not really. <laughs> what are you laughing the about? Face, she looked over like, first, so, what would that even look like? I, is yeah, the, is I, the, I the, don't know. Is the vibe I like, got. I got a vibe that she's so, not been in a church <laughs> Where people with a tur- have been with a dancing. Not really. I yeah. no. So I told Corinne this at one point too. I'm not a oh. hand raiser. Um, You're not a what? I'm not a hand raiser. Yeah. So I I will kind of keep it. Are you it. a plate holder? Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I mean, like, you can be a plate holder. Yes, yeah, you can. sometimes you I can have the plate holder. A, yeah. 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 Sometimes I have like the prayer hands or yeah. whatever. But like I, I tend to keep it contained as like a moment for me and him. Um, Are you ever going to yell anything out? No. <laughs> like this week, we're just ready to yell out. If there Jesus. was like an improv day or something, I'd be throwing out suggestions, <laughs> but no, I'm not doing service. No, so. you're not doing worship. No. You're not whistling or anything. No, not usually. Okay. I I just, I'll close my eyes sometimes and just kind of, you be know, in the moment. Yeah. yeah, just soak in the music, yeah. especially if it's a song that I really like. So. But yeah, no, I, I'm pretty mellow when it comes okay. to that. So now not- in my car, it's a little different. Yeah. Then you're turning on Def Leppard. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh. Okay, so we'll end it with this. Okay. Most influential person in your life and why? Most influential person in my life. Um, I would probably say my mom. Aww. And it is because she is like the rock. Okay. Like she, I, and she does a lot and doesn't say much, mm. but like she's shown me what being a tough woman looks like. Aww. So. Good. Yeah. Okay, Jenny, right, send here us we go. out. Yes, so the questions that were just asked, which I feel like this is the top um, the top are people that we've ever had to ask questions. Yeah. So that's amazing. Good job, guys. But if you aren't on our texting group and you want to be, go ahead and text PODCAST to 260-408-8383 and also send your name and that way I can know who we are talking to. <laughs> and if you ask a question, it just makes sense. But we want you to sense. each week when I send out the bio and the picture to ask a question back. That way we can know things. And or- I will be checking your grammar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I ain't you never write yeah. nothing. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. just want you to be involved in the podcast with us and to get to know things that we wouldn't have asked ourselves. But you can text us throughout the week. You can ask us questions, comments, concern, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, text podcast. Yeah. So we'll end it with this. So Sydney, I think mm-hmm. that some of the stuff that you brought up um, is very impactful from the standpoint of you're honest about the journey. Yes. Right. And I think <laughs> that's the the thing that people are going to learn, right, mm-hmm. through this podcast is that they're going to learn that it's okay to be on a journey. Mm-hmm. It's okay. You can still love Jesus and be in the talking face, right? Yeah. Like you can be <laughs> journeying through these things and that it's good that the exploration and the depth of going through that journey just makes the depth of your relationship even deeper. Mm-hmm. And so I think as people listen to this and hear that, I think it's going to be a mm-hmm. somewhat of a freedom or an understanding. You still love Jesus and you can still go down that road. So yeah. thank you for being honest and being able to share those things and yeah, just sharing your story with us. So well, thank we'd, you. We'd love to have you on there. So remember uh, when Jenny puts this out, uh, whenever Thursday puts us out, like, share, uh, you know, so that we can get it out to more people. If you're on our YouTube, put comments so that way we can get uh, more engagement through Mm -hmm. the comments that we have there. And if you're a listener, um, I don't know what you're supposed to do other than subscribe. Come say hi to me on Sunday. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And if you're watching and or listening, make sure that you look up Sydney on Sunday morning, come up and say hi to her. Mm -hmm. And don't forget the, the other piece, if you see Jenny, make sure in a in an English British <laughs> yes. accent, please come up and ask her out on a date in a British oh, whoa. accent. We didn't say that the last time. Okay. 
What did for I tea say? and crumpets we just at said the cafe. Just talk to her. Yes. Oh, okay. So just come up and talk to her in a yeah. British accent. And tea. Forget or to ask. Yeah. Her. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks everybody for joining us. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Yeah.